Okay, I've tried to record this video three times and I just keep getting off track. So I'm going to, going to try to get right to the point, and that is survivorship bias. This is a concept uh, that really blew my mind when I learned about it, and I think it's great to apply to a lot of areas, but in particular YouTube, because that's what I talk about, is growing my other YouTube channel and all the things I learn along the way. Uh, survivorship bias is basically when you only look at the success the success stories and you aren't taking into account all the failures and therefore you don't have full context. Uh, traditionally, the way this is uh, told is, I think it was in World War II, they would have all these planes that would come back and uh, they would come back with damage marks and stuff. And initially they thought, okay, right, we'll patch up the places that are damaged and that'll be good. We'll just, that that's what we'll focus on with the planes. And uh, someone had the idea of basically saying, well, these planes are getting back. They're taking all this damage, but they are making it back. However, we can't investigate the planes that never made it back in the first place. Um, so obviously... Where are these planes that made it back that we can examine? Where they took damage? They're probably pretty fine. We don't need to fortify those areas. What we need to work on is all these other areas. Um, the most, I, I don't know if this is true or not, but the one they looked at is the cockpit, basically. Like, okay, well, that's not damaged on all these areas, but basically if you don't get shot there, we know you're going to come back. And uh I heard someone, they were applying this to the video game Overwatch, and for context, in that game, uh, you have a bunch of characters, I think there's like 36 characters at this point, and uh, it's a competitive game, and they're constantly updating the game through patches, so it's always changing, they're always trying to balance things out and make a good gameplay experience, at least in theory. And, you know, when I heard about this, though, I thought about YouTube. And how going in, and I don't think this is just me, I think this happens to a lot of people, is they they look at all the successful channels and they're trying to see what they're doing. And, oh god, it's, it's really hot in here. I thought my air conditioning in my car would last longer, but I just gotta get comfortable with talking inside my house, because this is ridiculous sitting out here in the blistering heat to record this. Um, this is what insecurity looks like if you're just not comfortable being recording in a house where other people can hear when you're rambling. Um, you're stuck in a car sweating, so I've got to fix that. I've just got to record these in my room in the future. Uh, especially because I think we're going to have a hot summer, uh, even here in Ohio, which is nice, but rare, like really unexpected. Where was I? Yeah, with YouTube, I would just look at all these successful channels and basically you're like, well, what did they do? You know, another example that comes to mind is if you look at someone like Abraham Lincoln, uh, someone who became president of the United States, is considered one of the greatest heroes in United States history, uh, was this really, uh, I can't think of the word, cunning, cunning politician, uh, good lawyer, and you, you see he's a guy who came from poverty, and you're like, okay, obviously if I, like, that can happen. Abraham Lincoln basically came from nothing, and uh, he rose up to be the president, and you could look at, well, what are the steps he took? Uh, at some point he went off on his own. He would read all the time when he was uh, in the fields. Um, like I said, he, he I, I think at some point when he was old enough, he just like left his family because he didn't see them go, going anywhere and he just moved to Illinois, Illinois. And you look at that and it's really easy to just be inspired by that and think, well, I can do that. That's easy. Or I, I guess if it's not easy, you, you're, you might not be thinking it's easy, but you're, you're basing the path to success off of that when, realistically, there are plenty of other poor people who tr maybe just never got out of poverty or tried and failed, and you're not taking into account all of those stories. And 
this is a really big pitfall when it comes to YouTube because if you're just looking at what the successful people are doing, you're not seeing what all those unsuccessful people are doing who just aren't going to make it, who just aren't going to get that far. And I feel like I'm kind of going in circles here. Uh, is there anything else I can add to this? I I follow a lot of channels that... Uh, I, I like following smaller channels, and I like seeing what they're doing. Uh, one thing I'll notice is if you look on, like, YouTuber advice videos, you'll see a lot of, basically, graveyards in the comment section. All these people who are trying to get along with their YouTube channels, and maybe at most they make 10,000 subscribers, probably not even that, to be honest, and then they quit. So that would be, uh, uh, I, I guess, a thing to take into account with the survivorship bias thing is what's the difference between the successful and unsuccessful channels is, well, the unsuccessful ones quit eventually. I mean, that seems pretty obvious, but um, I think it's worth mentioning because part of YouTube is just staying in the game long enough. Uh, in my opinion, or at least what I'm trying with the other channel I do, it's it's a it's a marathon and not a sprint. It's it's a long game where it's really more of a long term investment rather than just a, I'm gonna hop on this. I'm gonna do a bunch of videos and get successful. So there's that. But there are channels that have been around for years and consistently upload and. This one guy I follow, because uh, I'll use him for researching in my videos, uh, he he hasn't even reached a 1,000 subscribers, and I think his channel's been around six years. He, he doesn't do good titles, doesn't do good thumbnails, and his content's all over the place. Like, he does a lot of stuff on things I'm interested in researching, but then he also does these videos that are just off the wall, that... I don't know, people probably aren't that interested in, or maybe the YouTube algorithm doesn't like that lack of consistency. I think this guy, he, he's an older guy. He, he might be retired and he just doesn't, he just doesn't care. He's doing it as a hobby. So I've seen it with smaller channels where people are trying to do this for a living, or maybe if they're really young, not a living, but fame. And it's like you, that's not the key is just uploading a lot. Um, I think that's one of those things where you look at the successful people and you're like, okay, right. I can tell that it's obviously key to keep going, but that's, that's like, that's not just it because there are some people who just keep going. Thumbnails is another great example. Uh, I have a different theory on thumbnails of what makes a good thumbnail than what you're probably going to hear in, I don't know, YouTuber advice videos. I, I I don't think there's this standard template of some dumb shocked face to the left side and then a bunch of text and all caps on the right. I think it depends on what you're doing. Take my advice as it is. I My other channel has 8,000 subscribers at this point, so... I can't speak from too much of a position of authority, but you look at those thumbnails that are considered the good thumbnails, and yeah, a lot of successful people use them, but a lot of unsuccessful channels do. So I'm not going to go too deep into this concept because I, I don't have the knowledge to. It's not something I've explored. I, I just haven't put the time into it, but I do think at very least... It's really something to keep in mind that you shouldn't just be following what someone does because it seems like they got successful off of it because you aren't seeing the full picture. And even if you don't have the time to research all of that and find a million smaller channels that are examples, that would be great if you could. I think it's just important to keep that in mind. Anyways, I'm getting boiled in here. Uh... I really need to get more sleep because these these update videos have been so rambly and just like yickety yackety lately. I, I really need to make them more like the old ones where I was uh, more calm. I, I think I just haven't been getting enough sleep. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful.